Welcome back to another episode of WordPress Tutorials with PixenWeb. In today's episode, we're going to continue with our WordPress theme development uh, series. In the previous episode, we spoke about the need for a local server on your computer. We spoke about the text editor that I recommended, which was Adam.io, which is a free and open source text editor. And then I also mentioned that you should head over towards WordPress.org so we can download the software. In this episode, we're going to actually download the software. We are going to then install it on our local server and we're going to go over the process from um, where the files go and setting up the database and actually activating WordPress locally on our computer so we could work with it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do then is uh, go over to WordPress.org. Uh, in this case, I'm already at the forward slash download forward slash page. And that is where you're going to see this option here that says download WordPress 4.4.2. So let's go ahead and click that. It'll download to our system. And then what we can do is go over to our downloads folder. And let me bring that over here so you can see that. Um, and you're going to see it downloaded as a compressed file. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to bring it over to the folder that it should be on, which is here in our HT Docs folder, especially if you're using MAMP. Um, if you, are, you chose a different uh, local server like WAMP or ZAMP, then you have to check out uh, the documentation for that one to see uh, where the file should go. But for this uh, local server, it goes in your HT Docs folder that's located in your MAMP folder that's on your local disk and then this PC. That's where it goes. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste it now. And then I'm going to place it right there. So you see it's in my um, HC Docs folder. It's a compressed file. So what we're going to have to do now is extract all the contents. It'll tell, ask you where you want it to go to. So we're just going to say um, right there, which is in the same folder. It'll extract the files. It takes about a minute for this to happen, so uh, just bear with it. Okay, a little less than a minute. So now you see it opened up in another window. So this is the main window. We now have the main file there. You see that's the one we just decompressed. Um, and then inside of it is this folder right here with the actual WordPress software. So what I tend to do at this stage is I will rename the folder um, to something descriptive to what I'm working on or you know in this case since we're doing a YouTube video I'm just gonna name it YouTube so then I'll just highlight it and I'm gonna copy it over to our um, root directory of the HC Docs folder it's important that you have your software in the root directory um, because that's where we're gonna that's where your local server is gonna be looking for the root. Um, so now we can close this window. And now that we have the WordPress software here, you open it up, you see these are the files that exist for the WordPress um, platform. So we're gonna go back up and this file we could delete. We don't no longer need that one. It'll delete that one. And then this, we also don't need the zip file, so we could just delete that. I clean up a little bit. I, you know, tend to keep a mess in my file structure, so, you know, I'm trying to change that. So you open it up, and real quick, this is the files and folders that you see inside WordPress software itself. Um, the beautiful thing about WordPress, it is open source. You do have the ability uh, to look at the source code. Um, you need to understand it. It's written primarily in PHP, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, with HTML and things of that nature, but um, you have the file. So if you're familiar with the programming languages, you can analyze it, inspect it, um, and, you know, play around with it. I recommend never to play around with the core files, the main files of WordPress itself. And 
uh, because that will alter the program and you might, you know, disable features or corrupt the files in some way, shape or form or prevent updates from taking place uh, later on. So it's never recommended uh, to mess with the core files for a site that you plan on going live with. Um, in this case, the, uh, the folder that we're going to be messing with the most is going to be the WP content folder. And it's going to be in the themes folder and then in another series we'll be going over the plugins folder these are the folders you can play around with um you know you your themes will go inside the themes folder uh so you know because in updates these don't get changed uh, with the updates so those we will go over how to um, add files add folders and things of that nature later on so that is the structure of wordpress software itself so now that we have the files downloaded what's the next steps uh, well the next step is we need to uh, run our local server so in this case as i mentioned i'm using map we're going to need to open up the start page and we're going to need to create a database so i already have the start page opened over here and we're going to the start page is right here and we're going to need to create a database and that database is going to be php my admin uh, PHP my admin um, is a graphical user interface for databases uh, like MySQL. Um, it makes it a lot easier to work with the MySQL database platform and gives you the ability to see, you know, uh, in a easier way what's taking place. So now we have to create a, a database here. So I'm going to create something that's very descriptive of our tutorial. Again, you want to in a production environment, live environment, make this complex, you know, make it something different that is tough to guess, um, you know, but for this local server, we're just going to create a database called YouTube. Okay, so now I'm going to copy that. And if you see now, we now have the YouTube database here. You click on that and what happens? Absolutely nothing. Um, no tables are created, nothing's created. You just literally created an instance of that database. So what's the next steps? Now we have to activate the the database, um, the, my, the WordPress um, installation on our local server. So now we'll go to localhost and then you'll click on the database on the file structure. This is the index of all the uh, websites or software that I'm running on my local installation. Um, and then we'll do um, click on the YouTube video I'm the YouTube folder and it'll bring us to this uh, setup page you choose your language you click on continue and then it's going to uh, request that you um, put in the database name which is what we just created uh, the database username database password host and table prefix since we're on a local environment uh, the database username and password are both root, um, but on a production environment, that's not the case, and it shouldn't be the case because you want to protect your database with everything. Um, but we're on a local server, so we can safely go ahead. So I'll click on Let's Go. So here you have to put in the name of the database. So that's what we're putting there now. So now we're going to put in the root username root password on a production site as on the local site localhost tends to be the database host um, that's because Linux does uh, run the uh, overwhelming uh, majority of websites that are found online so localhost is what Linux servers uh, do use for the most part you can always check with your hosting provider to verify that you can also change your table prefix if needed and then from you know that's done for security measures it's one small step for security but you know it's a step that a lot of people do like to take so then you just submit as long as everything's done properly you'll get this all right sparking message you can run the install now we're going to give our website a name so since we're doing a youtube video i'll just call this youtube and then you're going to want to give it give yourself a username this is your admin username so i'm going to put demo for this obviously on a 
production site again and I keep on stressing it because security is extremely important on a production site you want to have your admin name um, something unique and you don't want to display that to the front end so you'll choose a different name to display to the front end from your admin name um, so but we'll go over that in other tutorials then for the password I'm gonna go with a very simple password only since I'm on my local host obviously and you see WordPress wants you to have a strong password so in the, it's asking you to confirm the use of a weak password that's you know a good step in you know strong password management that WordPress is taking so we're gonna confirm using a weak password only because you know we're um, working on our local desktop environment so I'll give it a fake email account and then I'm going to discourage search engines from indexing the site. Since we're on a local host, it doesn't make sense to, you know, have this checked on, you know, checked off. So we'll just check it to discourage the search engines. So now let's install WordPress. It'll go through its installation process. And then from there, it'll ask us to log into our site. And then we'll just use the dem the username that we just created for our admin account, and then our you know, password. And then we should have WordPress installed. Now we are here. This is the welcome screen. If you've never seen it before, or if you have, then you're pretty familiar with it. It gives you a brief, you know, welcome to WordPress message, um, some next steps, more actions, uh, things of that nature. Um, but we made it this far. This is where we needed to get for this particular episode. And, you know, I want to thank you for watching it. You know, this in this series, we're going to continually uh, build our starter theme that we could use for projects, um, you know, as a starting code base for either uh, projects we do for other businesses or for other friends or for ourselves. It's always good to have a starter, a starter theme to work with. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts, questions, or ideas, please say, uh, please comment down below. And I'll be sure to look at that. And again, don't forget to subscribe. We'll be going over a lot of topics that are going to be great for managing your WordPress powered website, marketing your website on various channels like social media channels, email marketing, you know, things of that, na that nature. Um, so I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next episode. And again, don't forget to subscribe.